Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're actually going to be looking at a lot of different coins. Um, this month is actually going to be, uh, we're going to be releasing a report on a lot of altcoins. Um, so, you know, I, I would really follow along this month if you have positions in, in different coins. Um, I will apologize for the quality of the video. My camera recently broke, um, so I'm getting a new one. Um, so just bear with me in that. But if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on and like the video. So let's go ahead and jump in. So what we're going to be covering today is, you know, essentially price history and ROI and different types of ROI for a lot of different coins. So it's going to be a bit of a journey. So just buckle up and, and, and enjoy the show, I guess. Also, if you guys want to discuss any of these charts, then please check out the um, the telegram group in the description below so first of all we have bitcoin so this is the price history of bitcoin and note that this is a logarithmic scale so 10 to the zero is one so this is one dollar this would be ten dollars a hundred dollars a thousand ten thousand and a hundred thousand and this would be like ten cents one cent and so on so this is what the price history of Bitcoin looks like. And you know, you can see the different market cycles as we go through as we go through time. This is Ethereum, so it came out a good bit later than Bitcoin did, but you can see that its its price um you know, its price has actually done or or we've seen a remarkable ROI with Ethereum. Now, we're going to we're going to start putting on a lot of coins here and it's going to get really cluttered, but I promise you we're going to make sense of it at the end, at the end of the video. So here's XRP. Uh, you can see that you know you can see that coins do behave very differently from one another. For instance, you know Bitcoin tends to have these uh, you know these more gradual buildups, okay. Whereas Ethereum tends to just have spikes at at places corresponding to you know fundamental regions of of Bitcoin and where it is with respect to its price, whether it's say at an all time high. Or I'd say like a previous all-time high, or holding the 20-week. So Ethereum tends to behave, um, you know, in this type of manner where it, it doesn't it doesn't see the same, or at least historically it hasn't seen the slow buildups that Bitcoin does. But instead, you instead you see um, short-term spikes like this that correspond to what Bitcoin is doing. So key milestones. And with XRP, it's it's actually even even different. Um, again, I mean XRP is mostly flat, um, and the the times that it that it spikes, it does it very quickly. So you know potentially leaving the market in XRP in the past for just a few days, you could have completely missed out on this, um, you know 50x right here or so, or um, or even you know more gains if you had, if you had held it in longer. So. Um, and, and that's not to say that any coin necessarily has to go on a huge run again. We're just looking at historical data. So here we have uh, BCH, and we're just going to cycle through some of these just to get them on the chart, and then we're going to start manipulating things so that we can better understand them. So you can see Litecoin, um, EOS, BNB, XTZ, OKB, Cardano, Link, XLM, Monero, Tron, Neo Dash. I hope I'm. I know there's a lot of coins out there, and I found that no matter how many I include, there's there's always going to be one I miss that people are going to be upset about. Um, but uh, you know, if if there's one that I miss, and you you really want it to be included in some of the videos this month, and at the end of the month, I'm going to be releasing um, a very intensive report called Altcoin Letters, which you'll it, you can find it on on my Patreon page, and I'll show that later. Um, Adam. IOTA, VAD, BAT, DCR, ICX, um, RVN, and NANO. So we have a lot of coins on here, and we're, you know, I'm going to be looking at, at different aspects of these coins. And a lot of these coins were chosen um, based on community feedback and polls that I carried out. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people, I hope you're happy that you might see the coin that you voted for or that you really wanted to be covered on this channel. So we're going to be following these coins. And we have a lot in in store uh, this this month. Um, so here, what we're going to do is we're, we're we're changing it from price to return on investment. So every one of these price charts goes to one because when you know the very first day 
of of its existence, at least on some of the major exchanges, um, we would just say the ROI that day would be one because whatever the price was, you're always dividing by that initial price. Um, so you can see that some, you know, they, they come down first before going up. Um, others just seem to spike up right away. And a lot of it depends on when they enter the market um, and, and even the fundamentals behind them. Now, still, uh, we can't really make heads or tails of what's going on over here. It looks just like a, a lot of noise. Um, so let's let's look at it a different way. And it's still a lot of noise, um, but we're going to keep going. In this way, you can see that everything starts at zero. So we're looking at the return on investment versus days since inception. So it kind of gives you an idea of you know, how long some of these coins have been around. You can see that obviously Bitcoin has been around a good bit longer than the rest. Um, you know, Ethereum is this purple one that comes up here. XRP is the red one. Litecoin is the yellow one. Uh, this one up here that has seen pretty good returns is Dash. Um, so that one actually uh, <laughs> did, did really well um, compared to some of the others. And, and I should note there are limitations to this type of analysis because it depends on exactly what day you pick as the first day. Um, sometimes I'm only able to get reliable price data. Um, you know, I'm, I'm able to get it at a certain point, but it's possible, obviously, that it was trading before that and at lower prices, which would obviously change the ROI. Um, but these are the limitations um, and we just have to accept those and, and try to make heads or tails of what's happening from that point. So, um, again, you can't really tell what's going on. So let's jump into something more that we can tell what's going on. So here we're looking at the, the ROI of all of these coins since inception. So this gives you an idea of the, the level of return you would have seen had you bought these coins when they first came out or around when they first came out and what your current ROI would be as of um, March 3rd. Uh, so this would be your current R ROI as of March 3rd. You can see that Bitcoin is, is uh, a modest um, 100,000x. Uh, I mean, this is 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. You can see that Ethereum is is just under 100x, and and note that Ethereum's at 100x, even even despite you know the fact that it it was at 1400, and now it's you know almost a magnitude or order of magnitude less than that. I mean, it's not quite; it's at like 220, 230 that range, but I mean, you know, it was closer up to up to up to 1000x um, at the peak of the bull run. Um, but you can see XRP. Is, is still at you know around 30 to 40 x or so and, and some of them it's not quite fair because when they launched was say the peak of the bull market so naturally their roi is going to be um lower than one you would have lost money but that's just the nature of it i, I you know that's, that's what the data says that's when they were launched and that's what we go with so obviously because of this limitation we're going to to look at the data in a different way as well to try to to try to make it fair for coins that maybe came out at during the bull run but then you know maybe they crashed along with every other coin but they're they're still building and they're still growing today so you can see litecoin is a little over 10x um uh, we have uh you know binance coin or you know bnb over 100x dash several hundred x nano uh, around 20x or so um uh, bat is a, is right around one uh, you know and atoms just over one neos at 20 so you guys can see a lot of them and and to try to draw your eyes to, to which ones performed in different manners um we're going to color code these so Bitcoin is green, so I would. This is the one that you know you would have seen the best ROI had you bought it when it first came out. Um, Dash number two, BNB number three, and you know BNB is obviously no surprise because it's it's performed among. It's been one of the better performing coins even throughout the the 2018 bull or bear market. Uh, so it that's really that comes as no surprise. Um, and you can see that, you know, the ones that are yellow are have ROIs between 10 and 100. The ones that are blue have ROIs between 100 and 1000. And then the ones that are orange have ROIs between 1 and 10. And then if it's red, then um, sorry to say, but based on on the starting point, it's actually you would have lost money had you bought it on, on the day that at least I was able to find uh, price data for. So that's just the nature nature of the of the beast at this moment. Um, but let's let's be fair to these coins and and look at some of the more recent performances rather than just looking at 
um, what they did with respect to a, a day that doesn't really hold a, a huge amount of significance because it really depends on when the market or what the market was doing at the time. So here is our January ROI, and this is just January 2020. So this is if you bought January 1st and sold the last day of January, what would your ROI have been? And we've talked about you know setting this up like a horse race, and, and I've done it with horses, but I thought this would be a little bit of a more pragmatic approach, um, just showing the bar graphs. It's easier to read, and we can quickly identify which ones um, sit where in the race. So in January, your ROI, you would have actually been best if you, out of the coins listed here, you would have been better off, you know, with Dash. Dash saw almost a 3x in January if you had bought the very first day and sold the last day. And and really, it did significantly better than any of the others. Um, the next one I have up here is, is ICX at uh, number two. Um, we have uh, BCH at number three, so it actually saw a pretty decent month in January, um, number four, IOTA, and then Cardano, number five. So these are the ones that performed the best in January, um, and this is just looking at buying the first day, selling the last day. And you might wonder, well, Ben, I mean, you know, hindsight's great and all, but how does that get me to making informed decisions in the future? And we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about that this month, and we're going to go over ways in which looking at historical data, we can use that to optimize, um, potentially optimize our, our portfolios. Because, you know, one of the things, a lot of, I feel like a lot of traditional technical analysis uh, doesn't really work out that well. I mean, you know, most people called for 6K to be a huge resistance point that we would hold throughout all of 2019, and that wasn't true. You know, when Bitcoin was at 3,000, a lot of people were calling for 1,000 Bitcoin, and then that turned out, uh, you know, not to be true. So, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of technical indicators that are just nonsense and people try to use them uh, to, to make price predictions and, and whatnot in the short term. But usually those people are wrong. And, you know, then to to gain the popularity back with their followers, they just make another price prediction. Let's rinse and repeat. Um, so uh, one of the one of the indicators that I think is is among the better ones is. When, when an asset is doing well, it's more likely to continue doing well, um, obviously over an asset that is not doing well. So if you know if one asset is, is moving up, say 20% a month, in general, it's you know historically speaking, it's more likely to continue moving up at a you know to see those gains than a coin that was doing nothing or losing value for those few months. Now a lot of people in the crypto world, especially, will kind of take the reverse stance. They'll, when they see something drop, they automatically throw a lot of money at it. But I'm just saying, like, in general, coins that are doing well tend to keep doing well versus coins that are not doing well tend to keep not doing well. Um, and, you know, you, the counter argument would be if, well, if we're in a bubble phase and something's up 100x, that doesn't mean you should go buy it. Um, but that's a, that's a different story. So let's continue looking through this. So we have February ROI. Um, so this would have been if you bought the first day of February and then sold the last day. OKB would have come in at number one, XTZ number two, Link number three, Ethereum number four, and ICX number five. So let's look at some of the trends here. So in, if, if you look between January and February, what are some of the common denominators? Well, you can see um, ICX number two in January, number five in February. And this is out of 24 coins. Um, so ICX did really well. Uh, and you know, while there may not be others that are, that share a spot in the top five, we can also look to see what the coins would have done had you bought say January 1st. And then if you, where they, what their ROI would be if you were still holding them today. And actually this is updated through say March 3rd or so. Um, so if you did that, then your ROI would look like this. And ICX is still leading the pack at number one. Um, uh, link is at number two. Number three is OKB, four is Dash, five is XTZ. Uh, coming in at six is Ethereum. And Ethereum is, is a, you know, one of the ones I'm really bullish on. I think it's a good index for an altcoin portfolio. I mean, really, Bitcoin is the best index. But in terms of looking at altcoins, if, you, if, you're, if you're really bullish on Ethereum, then I think it's good to measure your altcoin value, not only in Bitcoin, but also in Ethereum. Because, you know, why hold 100 coins if you can just hold one coin and see better returns? Now, if you can hold other coins and see better returns... Um, 
then great, you know, and, and, and you can see that these were the winners so far this year. Um, at least these were the ones that were out ahead of the pack. Now, one of the issues with this is why do we choose January 1st? That's not necessarily fair to other coins. What if a coin saw a 3x right before January 1st and it's not fair to consider that would keep going up at the same rate um, and it might get an unfair advantage or, or a disadvantage compared to a coin that was going down right before it. Um, so let's let's look at an optimization problem. So let's optimize this. So what if you had bought at the best time in 2020 and sold at the best time so far in 2020? Um, well, ICX is at the head of the pack at almost around four and a half X. So congratulations if you were able to cash in on that. Dash to number two, um, at, you know, between maybe around 3.3 X or so. Uh, XTZ at number three. Okay, be at number four and link at number five. So links even coming in at over 2.5x had you optimized your buy and sells. Um, and even Ethereum is, you know, around 2.25x. So if you had if you had bought it at the best time in January and sold it at the best time um, since since then at like 285, then you would have seen um, a 2.25x, which is great, you know, and, and you would actually even be higher if you had bought it in December, which is when we were saying Ethereum was undervalued. Um, go back and look at those videos. We were we talked about several different videos where we were saying Ethereum was undervalued. Now, where does this leave us? Because you know, at the end of the day, we can we can analyze historical patterns all we want and say, oh well, it's nice what could have been, right? But how do we how do we turn that into something that's usable? Um, so, you know, during this month, I'm going to be spending a lot of time optimizing this, and we're going to be looking at, you know, what are some ways in which your your portfolio how could it have been optimized by, say, market cap or weighting the market cap in various ways um, or weighting it by other metrics in which you could have seen the best returns? Because let me give you an example. You know, investing, say, $1,000 in 2015 in Bitcoin in November of 2015 or so, um, or maybe not November, but investing in, in Bitcoin, you know, in the last bear market and selling at the peak, $1,000 would have turned into 100000 thousand dollars in ethereum would have turned into around 1.5 million so clearly there's a big difference and it all depends on what risk level you're you're willing to take i mean ethereum was a much riskier bet and it paid off for those people um bitcoin is a great one to head or a great one to have as an index you know and i, I think it's great and i own a lot of bitcoin and you know most of my a lot of, i say a majority of my portfolio is bitcoin um but I do hold, obviously, some some altcoins as well, and um, especially when we're above the twenty week, because when we're above the twenty week, altcoins tend to perform at a at a different level. Um, when when Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin is above the twenty week, when it's below the twenty week, well, you know, alts are uh, quote unquote dead, as as many people would say, but they usually get resurrected a few months later. Um, but anyways, if you're if you're interested in this optimization problem. And the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to look at various ways that your portfolio could have been weighted in say January and February and maybe a running, you know, throughout the entire 2020. Maybe we'll even look at 2019 and look to see how your portfolio could have been weighted to give you the best returns. And and the reason we say this is because, you know, a lot of technical indicators I'm not a huge fan of. I think they're um, not really that valid. If you remember, a lot of people were saying 6,000 was going to be a huge resistance level for Bitcoin during 2019 and that we would stay below it for all of 2019. And we just shot right past it. Um, a lot of people were calling for 1,000 Bitcoin and we never saw that. Um, and, you know, I, I think one of the better indicators is when an asset is doing well, it's more likely to continue doing well than an asset that's not doing well. And that sounds pretty straightforward, right? A lot of people in the crypto space you know, we'll throw a lot of money at coins that aren't doing well because they think, oh, well, look at the gains. If it just gets back to its all-time high. Well, I have news for you. A lot of coins that you saw get to their all-time highs in 2018, 2017, they're not getting back there. Um, and you're going to have to pick the ones that are, you know, that you think are, are worth the risk, you know, because every dollar you put into, you know, some, you know, John Schmo coin that's number 1300 or something on coin market cap. You know, that's a dollar that you're not putting into Bitcoin or a dollar you're not putting into Ethereum or something. So just consider that. I mean, you have a huge opportunity cost by doing stuff like that. So 
let's let's talk about this optimization problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about different scenarios and it'll be published at the end of the month in, in a report called Altcoin Letters. So if you're not familiar with my channel, um, I, I publish uh, different reports and uh, let's go look at some of those now. Um, so if, if you're interested, you can see, let me go back to the beginning. So into the cryptoverse.com, we have a lot of highly technical reports that use data science to look at macro level moves in the market. So if you just click on reports, you can see this one is, um, well, it's highlighting Bitcoin letters, but it'll take you to a lot of reports. You just click on Bitcoin, you can click on Ethereum. And the Bitcoin one was released in January this year, um, and it's free, and it's 21 pages, and you can go view it, um, and you can download it even. You can download it here, or you can hover and, and download it. And it's a long article um, that talks about you know the return on investment, the one-year ROI, the two-year ROI, um, so on and so forth. It looks at granulated ROIs, time-denominated ROIs, market cycle projections from market cycle bottom. It looks at risk management. We look at um, uh, logarithmic regression and, and volatility. Um, we look at you know excluding the peaks and fitting a single logarithmic regression curve. Uh, we look at moving average derivatives and comparisons with the S&P 500 as well as the comparison of Bitcoin with the total cryptocurrency market cap and it's and Twitter polls. So it's it's 21 pages. It's very long. So I'd encourage you to go read that if you want to get an idea of like kind of the, the quality that altcoin letters will be at. We also have Ethereum letters, um, which you can find. But Ethereum letters um, is is um, behind. You'd have to pay for it. So there is a free version that's five pages and you can check out the abbreviated version. But if you want the full version, then just go to patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse, sign up for the $50 tier, and you can get a subscription to Ethereum letters. And future editions of Bitcoin letters will also be covered under this first tier. So I'm trying to make this into a bigger thing for me. You know, I really like cryptocurrency and um, I really like, you know, providing people with high level data science analysis. So if you guys really want to support me, then check out one of these tiers uh, and you'll also get invited to a private chat room on telegram where we have around 80 people currently 83 people um and you know it's a good way to filter out the noise if you just want to be in a room with people who are who are serious and they're not there to troll everyone um it's a good way to filter that out we look at risk updates or we'll have risk updates in there macro level analysis we'll i'll post random charts from time to time and give you know my ideas um and other people will give their ideas too and then in the $50 tier, you'll get the Ethereum letters, but you'll also get altcoin letters. And, and this is the, the report that will be coming out in late March. And it'll be talking about a lot of different optimization techniques in terms of using historical data. So there's no guaranteed return on it, um, but using historical data, what are ways that we could have optimized our portfolio? And like say in say the altcoin, our altcoin portfolio, what are ways we could optimize it? And, um, how does it vary from month to month? Like, is there is there a trend that we can that we can follow that gives us a definitive way that okay, that this is probably a, the least risky way, or this is the most risky way, but maybe we have a, a good a better chance for returns. And this could be you know weighting it from taking you know taking the market cap and weighting it a certain way um, that's non trivial. Maybe it's the square root of the market cap. Maybe it's raising it to the you know two thirds power. Maybe it's taking the log of the market cap. Uh, maybe it's doing some fancy function on it. You know, we'll we'll talk about that in this report. It'll be an extensive report looking at it. We'll be looking at say other ROI return or return on investment charts, probably some logarithmic regression charts, um, and so on and so forth. So if you guys really want to support the channel and you want to get in um, and support the content and and really try to figure out different ways of, of weighting your portfolio and how that would have turned out in the past and using that to inform future decisions, then uh, please check out patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. Check out this tier. I'll invite you to the private group and we can go from there. Um, now, one question I'm sure I'm going to get asked is, you know, I'm choosing a lot of different coins um, based off community feedback. Now, some people out there are going to have, say, these 10 coins or, say, seven coins 
and they're going to want me to op they're going to want to know what the optim like a potential optimization technique for that and and what historically would the optimization have been to try to inform their future decisions so if you really want something like that i'm not saying i can't do it but because i probably will get flooded with requests for that i would just ask you that if you need something like that i would i would charge for it um and then i would just contact me on my website at into the cryptoverse um, dot com and then just go to about or contact I mean go to contact shoot me a message and we can figure something out and and if you you know if it's if it's just a few coins we'll, we'll talk about you know if you want to look at certain time frames and 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 how you can use that to inform potential future decisions so um, reach out to me on that if, if that's something that interests you um, check out patreon if you want to support the channel if you like the data science approach uh, not the day trading approach that most people will tell you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say Bitcoin's going to a certain price tomorrow, um, just so I can get a lot of likes and follows. Uh, we want high quality people here. So if you're one of those people, please at least subscribe to the channel. If you want to get for, if you want to get more involved, then sign up to the the public Telegram channel, which is free. We have 1,800 people in there, almost 1,900 people. If you want to dive in even further, then then check out the Patreon channel. And I do accept crypto. So you can, if you, if you don't want to go on Patreon for privacy purposes or whatever, you can either contact me here, contact me on Telegram and pay in crypto. Um, so I am trying to build something. I, I think it's, I think a lot of people like this approach. So um, thanks, thanks everyone for your support um, as we continue to grow this and, and prepare for hopefully this ensuing bull run um, over the next several years. So I think that'll wrap it up for this video. Again, subscribe to the channel at the very least, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.